Welcome back, Chiefs Kingdom. This is Locked On Chiefs, part of the Locked On Network. He is Matt Derrick over there from Chiefs Digest. We have plenty of things to talk about, including the head coach, the new acquisition, what's going on with the pass rush, and how this thing can get turned around, and will it? Coming up next on Locked On Chiefs. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs Podcast. Woo, Matt, Derek, how are you, bud? I am hanging in there, my friend. How are you doing, Ryan? I, I'm enjoying my week as a cellar dweller. I don't think it's going <laughs> to last that long, so you know what? Make sure you're embracing it yeah right and, and embrace I think everybody it everybody should you know yeah makes you it makes you feel a little bit like how, how the how the little people feel <laughs> right the other 31 teams in the league exactly all the other 31 teams now you get a little taste of it <laughs> in all kidding aside though i don't think this is something that's destined to last for long i know there's you know the sky is falling in chief's kingdom according to a lot of people but it, are you concerned at this point that they're, I mean, clearly they're in a battle with the Chargers now that they're down a game in terms of head to head, but like, are you, are you worried about the season in its totality? I can't get myself there yet. I really can't. I mean, maybe I'm the, the Pollyanna of the bunch here, but um, I just don't see the sky is falling as much, as much as, as some other folks do and everything. Um, we, I was even talking, uh, you know, after the game with uh, some of the, the other reporters around about what this, you know, kind of meant. I mean, and yeah, I mean, it's going to close out any of your 14 and three or 15 and two prep dreams, uh, most likely. Mm -hmm. But is this team, you know, 10 and seven, 11 and six? I'm not even sure that. I mean, I, 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 I see three games that still just look really, really weird. And the Chargers game was really, really weird. So, uh, there, hey, there'll be a lot on that travel to Los Angeles. You, you have to beat the Chargers later in the season, but. Uh, you got that in control. I mean, that's in your hands. I mean, you're still still controlling your own destiny. We'll use that with the air quotes and everything. Uh, but yeah, to me, I mean, I, I see an offense that's doing just fine when it's not turning the ball over with some fluky plays. Um, I'm seeing a defense that actually got better on Sunday and looked a little bit more energetic, certainly, and a little bit more confident. So I, I'm having a hard time finding getting myself into a deep, dark place right now with this team. Okay. Okay, good. I'm glad I'm not alone. So we're okay there. The thing that is concerning is what happened with Andy Reid. And obviously went to the hospital. We heard that report. We were on when we found that out. And then he did get released, did leave the hospital after having rested and been in, you know, stable condition. Whenever they put out a condition report, that means something, folks. That means that they were not certain that, that it was a low impact event. So keep that in mind. But now we understand that he's coming back to the team. Uh, no contact on Tuesday. That's the team's day off. You wouldn't have seen him anyway. If anything, it's film work for him. And and given this whole situation, I wouldn't have expected him to make any kind of statement. But do you expect that this is a blip and that if he is back in the office at least, that they should have him for Sunday? Do you see any kind of concern about this going forward this week? There certainly wasn't uh, a much concern about the future from the Chiefs on, on Monday. Um, certainly, I mean, the, the team had concern about just Andy Reid's health in general, and you certainly heard that from uh, Steve Spagnuolo, who, you know, he and Eric Bieniemy talked this on Monday in place of, of Coach Reid, which means we won't be talking to them later in the week. Um, but it, it, it certainly seemed like that there was a lot of relief on Monday with the club as far as his health goes, and and they were absolutely, everybody in that organization is acting like, this is going to be business as usual this week that, that they're expecting, you know, Reed to be around when they start practice on Wednesday and we'll be coaching this weekend. So from that standpoint, absolutely. I mean, this team, even though they are still being pretty tight lipped about exactly what happened and, and how Reed is doing, we'll see if he, you know, expands on that on, on Wednesday and gets into any of it. Um, I would be surprised if he does. Um, but so far, I mean, this organization is giving every indication that it's business as usual going forward. And so that means that you, you have to turn the corner on that event, uh, especially for a team. This is a player's coach. This is a, a man that leads a group of men that actually care about him. This is not just showing up for work for most of these players. So does that provide, uh, however, unintended a distraction that you think could be significant or you think can, can dissuade them from getting back on track here this coming week? 
I mean, if Andy, if Andy's back at work and in the building and running practices, I think that's all it's going to take. I mean, I, I, I think that certainly that, you know, I, you saw, I think a, a couple of different reactions from players afterwards on, on Sunday. I mean, you certainly had some, you know, like Tyron Matthew, um, you know, at least publicly expressing, you know, their concern and everything. I think you saw most of the guys just uh, stunned silence, you know, as far as what was going on. Cause I think there was a lot of fear um, with the team after the game and everything and just about how he was doing and what was going to be happening going forward. Um, but right now, I mean, it, it seems as though it is a blip that it's, that everybody's moving past it. We will see. I mean, if there's anything that, that does come of this, that's any long-term consequence. Um, if, if so, maybe we're able to discuss it on Wednesday. But other than that, I mean, it's, I certainly get the impression from the organization that, and, and people inside that they are moving on and that they just don't expect to have any long-term ramifications from this. Okay. Hey, I, let's hope that that's true. I, I think that that is certainly a possibility uh, with the continuity that they have in place. I think there's a lot of that, but we have to start talking about what that means for changes coming off of, of what happened just on the field. We're going to get into that next. It's that time of year again when all eyes turn to football and the NFL gets back on the gridiron. As always, betonline.ag is your number one place for college and pro games to get you into the action. Get all the updated odds, props, and contests, including the biggest online contest, half a million dollar NFL mega contest, as well as the 200,000 NFL survivor contest. They're both open now at betonline.ag. Head to the website, use your device, whatever it is, and you'll get a 100% welcome bonus. Take advantage of it and get in on the opening day super promo. $25 bet, even if you lose, you get your money back. Bet online is the fastest, easiest way to get all of your bets into the action, football and everything else. Use our promo code locked on over at betonline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. Hey, Chiefs fans, want to let you know about an incredible app that everybody who drives or buys gas all by itself needs to know about. It's called Get Upside. Our listeners, right now, you get 25 cents off of every gallon that you buy once you sign up with Get Upside. Then on top of it, they're offering right now with a promo code of touchdown, an extra 25 cents of bonus that you get back. That's 50 cents cash back on every gallon of gas that you buy in your first tank with the Get Upside app. There's a lot of people that drive around and put a lot of miles and a lot of gallons into their vehicles, and they're making a lot of cash back on this. All you have to do to become one of them is to sign up, get that app, get Upside, and use the promo code touchdown. Then you can get all your rewards back through your bank account, PayPal, or e-card, whatever you would like. Go over there, get the Get Upside app, and use that promo code touchdown. So, Matt, clearly they got a couple of the holes plugged last week. A couple new ones sprung some leaks. I don't think they've put together a complete game in any way, shape, or form yet. Did you? Did any of the nuggets stand out from you from the coaches here on Monday that, that might give you an idea about where they are or what the – the immediacy is of what the problems are. Yeah, you know, uh, I think that certainly there was a lot more confidence in the run defense. They felt like that from, you know, beginning to end for the most part, um, that the run defense got better. There were a few leaks maybe here and there, but they they really felt like they did, you know, the best job that they could. And I mean, you look at the numbers, I think that they backed them up. Um, the two biggest concerns that this defense continues to have and will have going forward is going to come back to pass rush in the red zone. And, you know, they finally got a stop in the red zone when they hold the Chargers to that field goal. Um, but other than that, once again, I mean, was, that defense was a sieve. And uh, it was some, you know, miscommunications and some problems in the red zone. Some of them can be cleaned up. And there was a lot of talk. I know a lot of the players on the team, and I think you even saw a little bit of it, you know, from Steve Spagnolo, a lot of frustrations with the officials on a couple of the substitutions that the Chargers were making in the red zone one of which certainly led to a touchdown. Um, you know, the Chargers made a substitution. Chiefs didn't feel like they were given, as by rule, that they are supposed to be allowed time to make their own substitutions before the ball is snapped. Um, they got caught without a play, and as a result, they you know, gave up a pretty easy touchdown. And and it looked like there was maybe a couple of those situations where, once again, that maybe, and, and Steve Spagnuolo talked about it on Monday, um, that maybe he was calling some things that were just too complicated in the red zone. It was taking them some time to get set, and to get communicated and then maybe they just need to simplify and clean things up from that standpoint and probably true i mean it's you know sometimes just going back to basics is exactly what you have to do um there's a temptation i think that when things are going wrong 
um, to try and find a more complex solution and do something tricky and to get more complicated and complex. When in reality, I think this team probably just needs to go back to some basics. And I think that's certainly what you're going to see a little bit more of the, in the red zone in particular. Um, the effort seemed like it was there uh, to me in the, in the red zone. Um, they were just, you know, being victimized by a couple of things. And some of them continue to be some miscommunications. So, uh, and I think they had a few of those even on, on Sunday as a result of, you know, with Traveris Ward and then later Rashawn Fenton leaving that game, you know, entering the concussion protocol. DeAndre Baker's out there seeing his first action. Looked like there were some miscommunications there. So you're still having some of that. And some of that's going to be happening anyway. Um, I think if you want to, if you know, if, if Spags wants to really bank on something, and, and this is something he could, it was that was discussed last week, is that eventually Steve Spagnuolo teams tend to get better throughout the year and figure things out. Mm -hmm. So at least I think you know, if you're a Chiefs fan, you can kind of bank on that that the worst is hopefully behind them, and that they're going to start finding some of these solutions. But some of the solutions may just be going back to basics and and doing things a little bit simpler and not getting things too complicated right now. And that's been in my game plan for the last three weeks, to tell you the truth. So it sounds like Spags is coming around to it. And whether it's executed or not, it, it is still that lack of communication. When you're down to your fifth corner, that makes things change. Do you expect to have Fentner Ward back this week? Ward seems like it's a, certainly a possibility. I mean, it was a quad injury that popped up on Friday with uh, some treatment. Um, we'll probably have a pretty good idea on Wednesday. If he's back at practice, then I, I, I think that's going to be a pretty good sign that he'll be ready to go this week. Fenton is a concussion protocol. That's always a little bit of an X factor. Um, really, the big question, you know, on, on Wednesday is going to be if you know, Willie Gay starts making the road back this week, mm -hmm. if he returns to practice. Doesn't necessarily mean that we will see him on Sunday. If he does get back on the field, they might want to give him a week just to, to get his legs underneath him and rebuild his strength and get his win back. Um, but Willie Gay should be pretty close to returning. He was the, definitely the beginning of October was always the target for Willie Gay's return. It seems like that should be on track, whether it happens or not. I, I think that we've seen Nick Bolton take some steps forward, and uh, especially given the effort against the run, I think that sets them up for what is their better defense in, in playing the pass. If they can get that communication worked out, hopefully they can they can solidify that because the lack of, of of five guys in the secondary doing what they're supposed to do is has been I think the the leading problem but the the biggest thing that affects that I think right now is the complete and total lack of pass rush kudos to Mike Dana for having a good game for him but as an end that should be attacking young players on the offensive line of the opponent etc this should have been a game where the Chiefs got a ton of pressure and they weren't able to pull it off a lot of talk about Chris Jones, a lot of talk about where's Frank Clark, how does this keep happening uh, for a guy that didn't participate in the offseason that much to be stuck here. Where you're sitting, what is the solution? How can they get this pass rush going? Yeah, I, 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 I still sense a, a lot of even exasperation from the Chiefs standpoint about, you know, how they're going to be able to, to get that done. I thought it was really telling that, you know, last Thursday when we talked to Spagnolo, he characterized the idea of moving Chris Jones back inside as a panic move. And yet, yet Monday, four days later, all of a sudden it's something that they've talked about and, and have considered. And to me, I mean, I, I think it's once again, it's even going back to the drawing board and looking about what their original plan with Chris Jones was. Um, supposedly from the very beginning was all about putting Chris Jones on the best mass matchup that week for him to be able to get after the quarterback. And sometimes, I mean, I think that's even more specifically should just be the question of what's best for the defense that week. Um, you know, I, I, in retrospect, I mean, I think that Chris Jones probably put it should have been playing inside against the Ravens. I think that would have been the better matchup for him. Um, there would have been less, less opportunity, I think, to expose him a little bit against the run, which is certainly the weak point of him on the edge right now. Um, right in, at this point, the Chiefs, what they've been doing is Chris Jones is a edge rusher on first and second down, and he's a, he's a tackle on the inside on third downs. And to me, I mean, that is it, – it's, it's kind of trying to have it both ways, and I don't think it's working right now. So if they want to go back to their original plan, which was identify the best matchup for Chris Jones and let him attack that that week, that to me is the solution. And if that means that he's playing a lot more inside, he's playing a lot more inside. Uh, the tricky thing with that is that it's I think it's going to be more difficult then to kind of get him and Jer Jaron Reed on the same page at the same time because those guys want to be in the same spot. And so that's a little bit more complicated. And then the other part of it too, is that even when Frank Clark comes back, you know, what is your best edge rusher situation? 
Um, at this point, I think Mike Dana has probably proven that he's the guy. And 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 even though the, the Chiefs have some numbers, I think the frustrating thing is that they don't look as deep there at that position as maybe we thought that they were entering the season. Um, you know, Okafor is certainly some experienced depth, but he's not the guy that they want to be leaning on for the majority of the snaps. They want him to just be a situational player. Mm-hmm. Um, Joshua Kando, I, I think, is certainly – probably not ready yet and you know when he's had to play in some significant roles with Clark out I mean I think that's been a a weak spot for them so yeah I mean some of it is absolutely they need Frank Clark healthy Uh, but the other part of it is they need to get Chris Jones in the best matchup regardless of where that is in some weeks that's going to be inside more I, I think that's exactly the path that they're going and again that's what will help stack up the secondary allow them to collapse some pockets now This particular week, it's going to be a little bit interesting. We're going to talk about the Eagles in this coming matchup right after this. One thing you have to know that we're going to tell you about is Built Bar because they are the best tasting protein bars ever. And it doesn't matter what your favorite flavor is, whether it's coconut brownie chunk or maybe the new grasshopper, the mint. It's incredible. And I even like, this is my new favorite, the toffee almond. All of these have things in common, including 17 grams of protein, only 130 to 150 calories, depending on the flavor. There's all kinds of amazing flavors that keep circulating and lots of special limited editions that you have to go to the website to check out. You can get that mint brownie or the raspberry or any of these. Whenever you go over to BuiltBar.com, when you do, use the LOCKED15 code and you'll get 50% off of your first order. That's the promo code LOCKED15 at BuiltBar.com. Now, pass rush aside, I think part of this is this particular week. It's about minimizing mistakes, again, with the communication like we've talked about, and not, I think, overemphasizing the interior pass rush, like moving Clark back here. I'm sorry, <laughs> Jones back in there full time, because that is going to flush a quarterback that is good on the move in Jalen Hurts, a guy that can deliver the ball. Um, frustrating night for him against the Cowboys on Monday Night Football, but I felt like he still showed enough that this team has to be very wary of what Hurts brings to the table. Yeah, and that's why I, I I would not be surprised at all if the Chiefs did you know adjust a little bit this week and put Chris Jones on the inside because this is a quarterback that if you go back to the Chiefs, you know I would say Ravens game plan in every year, but this year <laughs> it was all about keeping him in the pocket, you know, making sure that he stays inside, doesn't have anywhere to go, doesn't have anywhere to scramble, and that you're forcing him to stay in there and not giving him any room to, to go up the middle either. And, you know, with Jalen Hurts, I think that's exactly the thing. You've got to be able to set the edge hard so that he doesn't have anywhere, you know, to, to run to the outside, to extend plays. And, and then you need to be able to get pressure in his face. And to do that, I mean, I think that you need some guys with a little bit more experience playing the edge, playing the run. Um, on the outside, if you got Frank Clark back healthy, that's a big step in that direction. Um, but you know, getting getting Chris Jones where he can collapse the pocket from the inside, I, I think is also a big key there because what you don't want, you know, this game is is Jalen Hurts beating you with his feet. You want him to stay in the pocket because even though, as you saw Monday night, he can throw some, he can he can throw the ball, he can pick up some yards through the air. If he does that, he's going to turn it over. And that's what the Chiefs are really missing right now is creating some big plays on defense and getting some turnovers. Yeah, I think that is something that will calm again with everybody being where they're supposed to be and forcing somebody into a mistake. On the opposite side for the Chiefs, it's about limiting their own mistakes and not giving the ball away, something that's been uncharacteristic of them in general for the last couple of years. But I feel like the last couple of weeks, one guy that's taken maybe more heat than he should is Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Obviously, uh, a tough go against the Ravens, uh, much tougher than I think it should have been. I, I think that defense front is good, but I don't think it's anything like the Browns were. Um, but then they seem to hunker down and make a concerted effort, not only to be in the right place, not only to sustain blocks better, to play with more aggression, not just the lineman, but Clyde himself as well. How do you feel about what's happened the last couple of weeks with the layer in the running game in general? Yeah, I mean, I think you saw some big improvement in the run blocking uh, against the Chargers. There were definitely more holes for Edwards Alaire there, and, and certainly maybe just a little bit of better matchup as far as the run defense goes. Um, but I think the important thing, you know, to to look at with Clyde Edwards Alaire is that this team has not abandoned him. And and for one big thing reason is that there's not anybody in this team that really blames Clyde for either one of those two fumbles. Um, the fumble against the Ravens, remember, was really a, a a blocking fumble 
that was, you know, a guy getting penetration and, and hitting him in just the, the right place. But it was also a guy that wasn't wasn't chipped, wasn't blocked, just came in and put a hit on him. You're going to fumble in those spots. Um, so e- even though the Chiefs weren't pointing fingers, you know, internally you could kind of see that they felt like that there were that the offensive line was more responsible for that fumble than than Clyde was. And and then the fumble against the Chargers was really, I mean, that was the twisted up body. Um, he was going two different directions and got hit from two different ways. Those are going to happen. I mean, and, and there's almost nothing as a running back that you can do in those situations when you get bent like that and and turned around like that. So um, it would have been probably a miracle if he had held on to the ball in that situation. Those things just aren't going to happen. And, and and to a degree, that's what this Chiefs team is kind of feeling like with these turnovers, that, that the ones they had against the Chargers, a lot of them were kind of fluky plays. Um, you know, the, 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 the batted pass with Marcus Peter or Marcus Kemp not being able to pull that one down. Um, was kind of a fluky play. I mean, those just don't normally happen, um, you know. And and I don't, I don't think, I, I, I certainly don't get it from Mahomes, uh, hearing him and talking to him after the game that he regrets the throw to the kit to Kelsey. Mm-hmm. I think he would absolutely make that throw again um, because he feels like more often than not, you know, that play is going to hit, you know, rather than turn into a turnover. So. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, I kind of see it the same way. I mean, I see that some of these turnovers that they've had the last couple of weeks have been fluky plays. And you take one of those against the Chargers back, and I think they win the ball game. So, you know, I mean, and and still on top of that, to turn the ball over and put up 24 points. That just isn't normal. So there's absolutely, from Eric Bieniemy to Patrick Mahomes on down, there is zero co- lack of confidence in these guys. I mean, they this offense – is scoffing at the questions that there's something wrong with the offense because they think that they're doing absolutely fine. And that normally I would agree with that, but then they went out and it's been announced. They, they made an acquisition of a, a guy with a checkered past, but has athletic ability getting up there in age. Now, Josh Gordon is, but if they scoff at that, why are they bringing someone else in? Is there more panic about, the X receiver in particular, number two, number three, whatever you want to call it, then they're letting on in public. I don't think so. I mean, I I think that this is by and large found money. I mean, does it help that Josh Gordon is absolutely the fit for what this offense needs right now? I mean, that's more of a coincidence than anything else. Um, this is just a incredibly quality player on the field when he's on the field. Um, an impact player that can it can come in and and has shown an ability to be able to come in to an offense and be able to make a contribution almost immediately. Whereas a lot of you know receivers, especially, they need some time, and and that's going to be a question mark with coming into the Chiefs offense. Which let's face it, is it very complicated? Um, how quickly can you know Josh Gordon make an impact? Um, but I think it's really more of just the Chiefs are going to kick the tires on any quality player that can, becomes available. And two, they're looking for an X receiver. So the fact that, that Josh Gordon kind of falls into their lap, I mean, to them, I think it's just just fortuitous timing and, and great luck. Now the question is, what kind of an impact can he make? Because honestly, the range of outcomes is wide. Yeah. It could be anywhere from Josh Gordon never catches a pass for the Chiefs to he's MVP of the Super Bowl win. I mean, it's just that wide. I mean, and uh, you know, I was asked earlier, you know, what are kind of the – you know, realistic expectations for, for Josh Gordon. And I think a realistic expectation is that he's able to come in and be a contributor. You know, maybe he can, can become the number three, or maybe he can become the reliable number two target. Um, but based on his past, I mean, I think the expectation should be that, that in the second half of the season that he can come in and be a reliable contributor. And the opportunity to be more than that is there um, because, you know, with what the Chiefs have – this is a guy six foot three, you know, guts of spy, size, athleticism. I mean, this is uh, Sammy Watkins on steroids and in a good way. I mean, I don't mean that like Sammy Watkins need me on steroids, but <laughs> <laughs> but this is, you know, everything that Sammy Watkins was and more. So if he can come in and do some of the, the stuff underneath, you know, he can be a guy that you can count on for some contested catches who can, you know, get open over the middle. I mean, those are all things that this offense is crying out for. And it's no knock on anybody else because nobody else in this team, for the most part, is six foot three with the kind of you know athleticism that he has. Well, and I feel that the rigors that this team's been through in the last few years maybe sets them up to be a place that can support a player with a troubled past a little bit better. From Marcus Peters to Kareem Hunt and the issues that they had, counseling, support, 
do you think that that allowed them to go out and take maybe a little bit more of a risk than I actually thought that they would? I didn't think this would happen. Yeah, I, I, I feel like the, the Chiefs and especially, you know, with Andy Reid and Brett Veach, they generally feel like they've got a support system from their veterans on down um, to even people in, you know, in, in inside the organization, not, you know, behind the scenes in mental health, physical health, all of these things. They feel like they've got the resources that if a player who's had a troubled past comes into their organization, the resources are there. It's up to the player to really take advantage of that and make it work. And I think that the Chiefs have a handful of examples of it has worked. Are there some examples where it hasn't and some guys have left the organization? Yeah. I mean, I think that's going to happen. Um, but I think you're right. I mean, I think the Chiefs feel like that this is a good place for Josh Gordon, that if he's committed to making it work, it can work here. Um, the fact that Josh Gordon is willing to come to Kansas City, you know, to join the practice squad and, at first um, before becoming, you know, joining the active roster. I mean, he's not coming in here and making big money. I mean, he's making practice squad money. And with the Chiefs and their salary cap situation, he's not going to be making big money when he comes to the 53. It's going to be a vet minimum kind of deal. So I think the fact that, you know, Josh Gordon is accepting that and appears to be, you know, embracing that opportunity, I mean, I think it's a, a good step. Um, the other thing that makes this a low risk, you know, move for me is that even though Josh Gordon has clearly created some toxic situations for himself in the past, he hasn't created toxic situations for the teams. Mm -hmm. um, the teams that he's been with where it hasn't worked out, Patriots, you know, Seattle. I mean, well, Cleveland's a mess of their own making back in the day, but <laughs> it wasn't his fault. Right. Um, you know, if Josh Gordon, if this does not work, it's on Josh Gordon. And, and it's not going to be something that I think affects the rest of the team. So for the Chiefs standpoint, I mean, this is a low risk investment with an incredibly high payoff with a, a guy with tremendous physical skills at a position of desperate need for them. I think in the end, it's worth the risk. We'll see if it actually pans out or not, folks. We'll have more for you. Chris will be back tomorrow with some inside intel on those Philadelphia Eagles, and we'll have the pregame preview on Friday. Matt, thanks for all of your time today. Of course, Ryan. Always a great time talking to you, man. Guys, if you need information, go to ChiefsDigest.com and read what Matt's putting out. Thank you guys for being here. Make sure you like and sub over on YouTube and leave us those iTunes reviews. Let us know how you like the show in this format. Thanks for watching and listening today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.